Oh, oh my here. God. This is crazy. Middleofnowheregaming.com. Everybody go to that website. Say we sent you. Yeah, get that you traffic find, I bet they're really good at Minecraft. They're probably the antithesis of us. This is the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. Welcome into episode 53 of the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Osborne, and today I am joined once again by my sidekick, the Nintendo Ninja, Lou Cantaldi. Yeah! And the other awesome sidekick, the Destiny Demigod, Miles. Uh, Godzilla noises. <laughs> Godzilla, what? Godzilla just roars, right? There's nothing yeah. special. Just like, roar. roar. Uh, the the yeah. special roar that he does. The special roar. That he, he's, he's a special. Yeah. It uh, is. It has like he a uh, roars sound. in Japanese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and subtext down at the bottom, or or, or uh, what the fuck's it called? Um, subtitles? subtitles. Subtitles. Yeah. Sub- yeah subtext. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck am I? Thinking? I don't know. I mean, close. Eh, whatever. I'm still sick. Anyways, yeah. If you if you can't tell, I'm still sick. <laughs> He's dying. Uh, oh God, <laughs> the butt cancer. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> so yeah, if I start having a coughing like fit or anything, I'll mute the mic. Uh, hopefully. Uh, so again, if I cut out in the middle of of saying something, that's why. Um, but so yeah, uh, episode fifty three. That is, uh, we are now two weeks past a full year as being a as a website and a podcast. Um, that's awesome. I didn't. I, I guess we should have mentioned that last week. Did we mention that last week or the no. week before? I that think was so. The year anniversary. I know we did the 50th episode. Oh, yeah. Maybe we didn't mention the year. I, I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, what episode are we on? <laughs> 53. <laughs> we might be getting close to my anniversary. Uh, your anniversary oh, was oh. the end of October. Yeah, that's what I thought because we did that whole um, uh, that big Google Hangout where we talked about what we'd do in a zombie situation. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Um. Here, hold on just a second. I could check and see actually what your first episode was. It was a bunch of people who are now no longer on the team. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and then people, just some fans, too. Yeah, some uh, some past fans. Do they still listen? Uh, you yeah. guys, I do you still s- listen to us? I assume they do. I don't know. You sound so needy right now. <laughs> do you listen to us? Okay, so your first... Are you ep- there? <laughs> 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 um, your first episode on the podcast was actually episode five. It was on October 23rd last okay. year. Okay. So we are... So three, another three bottle weeks. of champagne that day. Yeah, we're three weeks out from your year. Um, Miles, what was your first episode? Let's uh, find Honey. that out. 30-something? <laughs> uh, it was, oh, there's Miles, it looks like 38 on oh. June 18th, right after E3. That looks like it's the first time you were on. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you're ways away from the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so the reason for bringing up this whole year and all that stuff uh, is that uh, we go through cycles where we hire new writers, new people to join the team, new people to make content, new people to review stuff, all that kind of stuff. And we are once again doing that. We are in the hiring stage looking for new people to join our team. Uh, And we specifically want new writers, editors, community managers, and content creators to help build our site. Uh, This can be, you know, just like like I said, news writers. We need people to help us edit stuff because we have so many things that go up. We need a lot of editors around. And we need community managers to help run our Facebook and our Twitter and our Instagram and all of that. And, and those people will be like required to respond to comments, uh, to post original content, you know, like a picture here and there with maybe a funny question or something. Um, they'll be responsible for, for pushing our stories. So like, um, say a story hasn't like gone drugs. up. Drugs. Yeah, yeah. Pushing <laughs> stories. Um, say a story hasn't gone up for like four or five hours. Um, you could do, you could go on and do an in case you missed it. So I C M I, is that what it is? In case, no, I C Y M I. Really? Yeah. I C Y M I. You do that and I you go, in case you missed it, you know, and then you post a new story that happened yesterday or over the weekend if it's on a Monday or something like that, just to push, push the stories once again out there for people who may not have seen it the first time around. Um, and content creators, uh, that could be a video person, somebody who produces videos. So let's plays, reviews, 
um, just little, uh, graphics for, for like the podcast videos or anything like that or who, or somebody who maybe wants to do news videos. So somebody who does like a, a, a daily wrap up kind of thing or a daily fix from IGN, you know, something, anything like that, any kind of video, uh, production. Um, and that also, re- that also includes, uh, photos. So anybody who, who's good at, at making pictures, graphic designers, things like that, who could help make featured photos for our stories or for, um, like a, say a display picture for some of our, our social media sites or cover photos, things like that. Um, we're looking for basically everything. Um, <laughs> we're so needy. <laughs> yeah. We're not exactly sure how many we're going to bring on, uh, when this is all said and done. <clears throat> Honestly, we're hoping for a lot, you know, we're right. hoping well, to significantly increase the team size. Just so people could take a peek behind the curtain. It's been one day since we made the announcement we're hiring. And since that day, we've gotten, um, exactly 40 applications. Yep. Um, In which is a lot. Seeing how we are a team of what, like 20 people? Yeah, we have if. currently, I think 20, uh, let me find 22 people. So. So yeah, we, if we took everyone on, we'd be tripling the team. And we're not <laughs> opposed to doing that if everyone's a fantastic writer. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, we definitely need to, to make sure that everyone knows that. If, if you are a good writer, you're probably going to be asked to join the team. So we, right. we really hope that everyone is awesome. Yeah, please apply. Um, especially if you want to kind of get a small start into gaming journalism. Uh, I started this last year just knowing nothing really. And, uh, I've really built on that from that. And now we apply to IGN and we of course all have a great portfolio. You guys can do the same. For instance, uh, Miles got, uh, he was a candidate, I believe. For, that was something. <laughs> he was something. Miles and one of our previous writers, Brett. Uh, yep. Yeah, Brett yeah, got two, yeah, an two people interview. Two people who have been on our team have had, have had, uh, interviews or, or talked with IGN about it. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we're, we want everyone to join if you just want to have fun to write with for us or if you were, you're looking to, you know, this to be a stepping stone to go somewhere bigger, uh, to build your portfolio and all that stuff. Uh, but like you said, when, when you joined the team, Luke, uh, you really didn't know anything about any of this. And, and I didn't either when I started this website. I kind of started it on a whim and it kind of blew up and I learned on the job. Um, so qualifications for anybody who wants to work for us or, or write for us or produce for us or anything like that. Um, there really aren't a whole lot of qualifications. All we ask is that you really, you know, you enjoy gaming and you want to be a part of our, our community. You know, you want to talk about games, you want to write about them, you want to, do all that stuff. Um, we train all of our writers and editors on formatting and grammar and all that stuff. Uh, the training's pretty extensive. It, it's not hard, um, but you know you'll, you're going to have to have everything edited by several people, and, and, and it's just a process you go through. Um, it's it's a steep learning curve to start, but you once you get a hang of it, it's a, it's really really quick. You know. Yeah. And you're only asked if you do get asked to come on the team uh the minimum is one story a week one news story could take about maybe 20 minutes or so if we're including editing time and whatnot um but of course everyone is uh is asked to do more if they'd like to uh and you really do have a lot of room to grow in the uh in mong uh Specifically, the last batch of people that we brought on, a lot of them are now editors, uh, senior editors, because they, uh, because they worked really hard and they've done a fantastic job and they put in the work. Yeah. So, uh, minimum qualif- really small qualifications and tons of room to grow. It's really a great, um, environment to be in. We all talk about games 24-7. So if that's your life already, then, uh, definitely try it out. Um, and then also to go off your, the one story a week thing, uh, for content creators. So like if you wanted to be some sort of a video producer or video editor kind of thing where you, where you make the videos, um, that all, that, that is included. So, you know, if you're going to be just video or just something uh, other than writing, then you have to do one thing a week for that. Whatever your, your area is, it still has to be one a week. Um, because, you know, we want a bunch of gamers on our, on our team. You know, we want a bunch of cool people to talk to and all that stuff. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want a lot of people who are going to just join the team and just talk to us and not actually produce for the website. You know, this website is for us to be, you know, uh, we want to produce everything. We want all the news out there. We want all the reviews out there. We want everything like that. 
And in order to do that, we need everybody producing and nobody taking, you know, three weeks off, that kind of thing. Um, so, but there are leniences, you know, you can get by if, if you have, if, if you have a week that's, you're too busy, you know, and you can't do that, you just have to let us know and things like that. So it's not like we're so strict that if you miss a week, you're kicked off. That's not the case. So don't think that. Um, and then one final, uh, perk that comes with the job is that, uh, we actually can get passes for all the conferences. So E3, PAX, Comic-Con, all that stuff, we can get those passes. So if you live in the area or if you want to pay for plane tickets or gas to get to it or whatever, we can get you a pass. We can get you in. You can go in there, play all the games that, th that are there, you know, write all the stories you want, interview developers, publishers, all that stuff. We can do that. Um, and, it, and it comes along with that is that we also get review copies for games. And so uh, I guess I should have said two perks, but but yeah. <laughs> So yeah. So if you well, want, what there's Sorry. a third perk. You know, they work, get to work with all us, uh, wonderful and loving, and uh, we're like a family here at Mong. We and are. We family. want you to be part of that family. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So if you do want to join the team uh, in any any way, shape, shape or form, just go to our website. Uh, there is a story up right now with the application included and all the information. Um, but you can also find the application by going to the About tab at the top, and, and the drop-down will have a thing that says Application. You just click on there, go to the application, or it's easy. You can find it easily at middleofnowheregaming.com slash application. You know, that easy. Go find it, apply. Uh, we hope to hear from everybody. We hope to increase the team size soon. Um, and if you have applied, uh, we will be in contact soon if we haven't been already. Um, and We, we haven't. We, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> there are some people that I've I've mentioned or I've talked to, and like, there's been one graphic designer that you've been in contact with. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's true. technically in contact with people. Um, if, I was gonna say, but if we haven't been in contact, we will be soon. So expect an email. Um, I don't know how soon. I don't know how long this process is gonna take. Cause like like we said, there there are 40 people who have already applied. So we're gonna try to get back to everybody as soon as possible and try to get through this process. Um, but yeah, so. That's about Patience it. Patience is a virtue, people. Patience is a virtue. We know this because applying to IGN takes months. It, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then one more thing before the news. Lou, take it away. Okay, well, this is the newest, absolute newest segment. We've been adding segments left and right. Um, this one's called iTunes Shoutout, where we go and look at our middle of nowhere gaming podcast iTunes review. And if you write a new review, if we get a new one during the week, we'll go ahead and give it a shout out on the podcast. Um, because really we, we, we're very thankful for everyone who goes and adds a review. It helps us move up in the iTunes rankings, I believe. Um, so yeah, let me get to it. Uh, this is five, a five star review by Claire McRae. I know who that is. I, I was trying to figure out, uh, we have this just written down as C E uh M C Cray. Uh and I was trying to articulate that. I realized it's actually one of my friends from college. Oh. Um Yeah. So I would have never known otherwise unless we were doing the shout out. But anyway, she that it was titled Solid, Solid Indeed. It reads as Now I like me a podcast and I like me some video games. But how can I combine my two loves into an entertaining, informative listening experience? Why, through Manga, of course. Manga is solid because it isn't a program from the business. It is just by gamers for gamers. They're geeking out about things just as much as you or I, except they are researched and educated and whatnot. And amusing. Solid listen. Now, if you want to leave a review, uh, review you can find our iTunes page by searching the iTunes store for Middle of Nowhere Gaming and just... Leave a review there, and we'll make sure to get, to give you a shout out. We really do love getting these, for sure. <laughs> like I was, I don't know. I the last time I had checked on the reviews was was when we did the giveaway, and and that was one of the things you could do to have another entry into the giveaway. Um, and so it had been a few weeks, and then when you brought it up last week, I looked out there, and there was like you know five new ones. I was like, holy shit! You know, people actually review stuff on here <laughs> when they're not forced to, or do they still think that we're doing a giveaway? <laughs> <laughs> they just hey, hey, to hey, old don't, episodes. Don't ruin it, man. We need more. Don't, don't, we're still doing the giveaway, people. Yeah, yeah down. for sure. Just, just go ahead and pot, <laughs> or just go ahead and review it. By the way, uh, we're not actually still doing the giveaway. Yeah, so, you know. one, not another one yet. <laughs> not right now. Okay, so. Let's move into the news from nowhere and get through this. <coughs> All the big news this week, or this past week. Yeah. Okay, so uh, October's game, or Games with Gold, was revealed. 
Uh, Xbox 360 players will be able to download Battlefield Bad Company 2 anytime between October 1st and October 15th. Uh, then they will be able to download Darksiders 2 between October 16th and the 31st. Uh, and then Xbox One players are going to be able to download a brand new indie game called Chariot uh, anytime during the entire month. Uh, so uh, Chariot, I had never even heard of until this story. Um, it's described as the newest ID at Xbox game from Canadian developers. Uh, Freema, I think, uh, is it's a couch co-op platformer that can be played alone or with a friend. Players take the role of a brave princess or her faithful fiancé as they maneuver the departed king's coffin on wheels through 25 levels set in five vibrant underground environments with his majesty's ghosts giving them a piece of his mind every step of the way. Filled to the brim with emergent physics-based gameplay, Chariot offers exciting offers hours of exciting exploration, fast-paced ride sequences, and mountains upon mountains of loot. Oh. Interesting. That, uh, yeah, that... I don't know what to think about that, but uh, <laughs> does anyone else find it weird how they stagger the uh, free games? Yeah. Because, um, like, PlayStation Plus has been doing this for a while now, and just, like, give us the games all at once. I don't know why you're, like, holding back on us. Well, see, why are you holding out on us? I think, okay, here's what I think is, uh, PlayStation, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, they made the deal a long time ago. They knew that they might lose money, event, or, you know, initially, and then gain money later from the whole PlayStation Plus thing, giving free games. Mm. Um, I think that Microsoft is stingy enough that they don't want to lose money. Um, and that's why they're making every game only available for half a month. Uh, it's just like, you know, we're giving you two games this month, but you only have 14 or 15 days to get each one. You know, you have to get one then and this one there. And like, rather than giving them the entire month, they get both games. So that's, that's going to cut out a lot of people. You know, I, you know, we don't know the percentage of people who, who will miss out on each game or whatever, Mm -hmm. but it's going to, it's certainly going to cut down on people who are going to get it because there's just some people who are going to forget. And that means lost money. And that means, you know, maybe they're going to miss it and they're going to get on on the 16th and they're going to be like, shit, I wanted bad company too. And then so they're going to have to go to the Xbox live store or whatever and buy it for 1999 or whatever it is. And so that's actually going to give them money in the end. And so to me, it's just Microsoft being stingy. I don't see that. And what are you? I, I, do you um, have I just, a reason? Or a no, rebuttal? I just think, I think it's a way for them to differentiate, um, themselves from PlayStation Plus. They don't want to be seen as just copying. And, uh, I mean, I'm not a fan. I'm especially not a fan of the games they picked this month. I think they've been doing generally a great job picking games up until this month. Um, at least lately. Yeah, Darksiders uh, 2 is yeah. alright. Darksiders 2 is highly regarded and Bad Company 2 is, is the same. So. Oh, well, I love they're not. Bad Company 2. They don't speak to my interest then. But. Um, yeah, I, I think it's weird what they do, but it might, there, there's other reasons they could do that. Maybe it's a way for them to try and promote people to come on at least twice a month I, to go through the store every month. Yeah, that could, that could be the case. Mm-hmm. Again, that leads to being stingy though. Oh, that, I don't think that, that, I don't think that's being stingy. More, that's, well, it means to them being money hungry. They want more money and, and obviously that's a marketing thing. That's a marketing Well, as a corporation, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a way of doing it. However, like I said, it's not them being it, – It's it differentiates itself from PlayStation by making them want to spend more money. Then rather, rather than giving them the ability to download two games all month long, they're going to split them up. That way you only have a few days to get each one, which also means you have to go to the store and maybe see something else you want to buy. You know, it's like – of course it's marketing, but it makes Microsoft look much stingier and money-hungry compared to, to PlayStation or Sony, in my opinion, obviously. Right. But – uh. Yeah. Who knows how they fucking make money off all this stuff? Wasn't there a story recently about like um how they made money or or somebody came forward saying that this is how they do it or this is part of how they do it or one of those big name assholes in the business. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see uh, it. Yeah, I don't <laughs> What's the biggest uh, asshole in the business? I don't remember his name. Cliffy B. Bobby Kotick? No, neither of those. Um the uh, guy who made Doom, John Romero. No. Oh, it's absolutely him. No, no. The guy who, <laughs> the guy who, who criticizes everybody. He's like a journalist, like, like it's seen as a business journalist kind of guy for the gaming. And he just like slanders everybody. Slanders oh, PlayStation. Oh, uh, Packer. Yes, that's the douche. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to remember his name. I, I don't know if I'd call him any. He's an, an analyst. Is that what everyone supposedly know what he calls is. him? That's what, that's why. Yeah. I, I he never gets any started. of his predictions right. So, yeah, he um, sucks. <laughs> I don't know who this is, to be honest. 
Michael Pactor, isn't that his name? Yeah, Michael Pactor. Oh, he Michael. Works for, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what got it? Yeah, Michael. Well, like, oh, God. Michael, yeah. Not I only know one that's of those. Michael. Oh, hey. Yeah, he works for uh, Game Trailers, right? He did. He works for something, didn't yeah. he? Because oh, okay. isn't Game Trailers non- non-existent anymore? Or, uh, or did I miss, or was that different? I think Game Trailers is still around. I think Maybe they, they just, just downsized. People. Yeah. yeah, that could have been the case. I don't remember. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so let's move on. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Oh, actually, I'm going to bring this up real quick. I just saw something. Uh, Gamefly is doing a sale real quick. Uh, I yep. think uh, 24 hours probably. It's normally what their sales are. Um, but they're doing a sale for Thief and Watch Dogs. Um, Ooh, for Thief, either. you can get a used copy of Thief on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 4 for eight ninety nine. Holy wow. shit. And Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 for seven ninety nine. And then Watch Dogs, you can get for PS4 and Xbox One for nineteen ninety nine. Mm, Holy shit! That, mm. Those are <laughs> that's that's not a bad price for either of those. Thief for yeah. nine, nine bucks and Watch Dogs for twenty. I wouldn't pick up Watch Dogs until it was like fifteen to ten to fifteen. <laughs> fifteen is so much better than nineteen ninety nine. Hey, hey, that is a big difference. <laughs> you could get a meal with five dollars. That's true. Cook out. <laughs> I will give you that. I will give you that. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Let's move on. <laughs> Moving on, uh, in Japan, the Wii U exclusive, Bayonetta 2, isn't blasting off of game shelves after selling under 40,000 copies after one week. Ooh, that was loaded. <laughs> <laughs> in comparison with its predecessor, which was sold on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, it sold less than 20% of the original Bayonetta in the same time. Bayonetta 2, which was released on September 20th, sold 38,828 copies on the Wii U, while Bayonetta Original sold a total of 199,567 copies in the first week. That is a huge difference. Well, yeah, I'm wondering how how different the attach rate is, though. Five times less um, for the Wii U than... I mean, Platinum Games doesn't give half a shit. No. Because because Nintendo is paying them to make this game. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they don't care at all. They could sell none and they'd be happy. But it's still. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter because that's brand, and and Bayonetta will die if it does not sell well in the U.S. You know, it's if it sells like it did in in Japan over here, then we're not seeing a Bayonetta three. It's just not going to happen because that's five times less. That's a huge huge difference. Um, and and it just goes to show you the uh, difference between. Uh, releasing multi-platform and releasing exclusively on a platform that is the lowest selling platform in the generation. You know, like that's, oh man. Obviously Platinum Games, like you said, pointed out, they, they don't really care because of the money right now. They've, they've got, they probably got paid out the ass for that game. Yeah. They, they said they would, they would love to work with Nintendo forever. Like no. they'd, they'd be totally fine with that. But that's because they could do whatever they want at Nintendo and they're getting paid for it. So. <sighs> Um, he's, he's fine with that. Now, Platinum Games is the one who's developing the Legend of Korra <laughs> game, right? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, is, that's coming out later in October. Um, isn't it only going to be like 15 or like 14.99, something like that? Uh, it doesn't interest I me. I think it was going to be a download game for like 15 bucks. And, and if that's the case, it's just even more like they, they're, they're just, they don't really care about making the money because they probably have deals set in place because that's a licensed game, you know, so they probably have a big payment coming for that one. I'm still right. convinced about that game. Yeah, me too. But we'll see. But uh, yeah, this has nothing to do with the the news story, but the headline. I don't know why, but isn't blasting off made me think of like Bayonetta dressed like a uh, Jesse from Team Rocket. <laughs> blasting every time off again. I, read it. <laughs> I mean, they have cosplay in there. <gasps> yeah, Could I be mean, that. Yeah, yeah. That Pokemon wouldn't surprise cosplay. me. <laughs> she has the hair for it. <laughs> she does. Um. As a as a minor side note, a formatting note, I don't know if you guys have noticed already, uh, but instead of doing the first line as like a quick, uh, you know, one two punch, what the story's about, and then the next line actually being the first line from the story, I've made the first lines of each of these news things the first line of the story, okay. because I, over the past several weeks, they the first line yep. said basically <laughs> the same thing as the wrap up in the in the title or whatever, and you guys would read the title and then the first line, and it was saying the same sentence twice. I, I was like, I noticed. I was like, God damn it! And so I just I start stopped doing that, and now now it's like this. So I, I felt like an idiot every time that happened. <laughs> I know. I, I was kind of like, the end, I'm like, man, I just said the same thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, listeners. Oh man. Okay. Anyways, next story. 
All right. So last week, Amazon successfully acquired Twitch Interactive. You know, since that was a big deal, since uh, Google was trying to make moves and all that. Uh, the deal, which became official yesterday, completed uh, the almost one billion dollar deal. One billion dollars. One billion. Uh, that was announced late last month. Twitch CEO Emmett Shear said the following about the long-term success of the deal. We'll be able to create tools and services faster than we could have independently. This change will mean great things for our community and will let us bring Twitch to even more people around the world. We're keeping most everything the same. Our office, our employees, our brand, and most importantly, our independence. But with ama- am- amazons, but with am- Amazon support, <laughs> we'll have the treasures. Our treasures? How did I get that? <laughs> what the hell, it's falling apart. Uh, but with Amazon support, we'll have the resources to bring you an even better Twitch. <laughs> I, um, now that I, okay, recently I haven't been using Twitch as much, but over the past year I've used Twitch more and more and more. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it's, it's really, really good for what it is, but it could be improved in so many places. Uh, and I, I, you know, I keep forgetting that it was Amazon that actually bought Twitch. And every time I see a story about it, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. You know, Amazon did it. Sweet. It's not Google. You know, maybe there's going to be good stuff coming. And, and so, like, every time I see a new story about it, I just keep getting more and more excited about new changes coming to make it bigger, better, and all that stuff. So, I'm, I'm really excited about the future of Twitch now. Harder, better, faster, stronger. But, um, I <laughs> think one thing they should, uh, uh, Kanye, you mean Daft Punk, sir. Yeah. Uh, one thing they should definitely do to fix that is, uh, or one thing they should fix is the, uh, the thing that happened when Google first tried to buy Twitch, I guess, with the, uh, where, like, if you're going through someone's backlogs of videos, if there's any kind of a copyrighted music, it'll, like, just, you know, just blank 30 yeah. minutes worth. Yeah. I forgot what the exact name of it, but that feature is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I, in fact, that feature and, and everything that came during that few weeks span, all those updates they made, um, yeah. that actually made me change my settings to where I actually don't save videos anymore. So like you can only see my streams live and you can't see any anything safe just because I don't want to run into a case where I get flagged and then all of a sudden my account is locked out like we've done with YouTube in the past. You know, like I don't want that kind of shit to happen. And so like I just completely have avoided the issue. Like I don't care if it's not possible that that can happen. Like you don't un- you underestimate the internet, you know. Like I just I am not going to take that chance until everything is set in stone the way it should be, and then I can work around it and figure out what I can and can't do. So for now, I don't have any vods on my my Twitch. Yeah, it's just it's an unfortunate thing to happen. It's yeah. very silly. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, I guess moving on since Lou is silent. Yeah, uh, I don't have much of an opinion on that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> number four. <laughs> Alright, Sony Computer Entertainment Japan recently announced the second major update for Freedom Wars. That's the uh, amazing PS Vita game right now, uh, which will bring new additional features to the game. The two main features being added in this version, the 1.2 update, uh, are the inclusions of a PvP mode and a new mode called Ideology Fights. Online PvP will be able to support up to eight players, with the addition of everyone's accessory partners, that's the uh, NPC that runs around with you, the total number of characters per match rises to 16. In the ideology fights, an ideology opposition structure will be presented, the meaning of which currently remains unclear. No one knows what the hell that is. <laughs> uh, more details regarding this mode will be released soon, with the update scheduled to be going live in October. Freedom Wars is scheduled for a North American release on October 28th, 2014 for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, I, I just want to know what an ideology opposition structure is. Because... <laughs> um... Ideology. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it sounds like a very just... Japanese-oriented press release. It's yeah, you're right. <laughs> a structure is probably referring to something like online, like some sort of a uh, algorithm kind of thing. You know, like a very Japanese way of doing things, um, especially like in a futuristic world, like a, uh, an AI kind of thing. And it's ideology opposition structure. So it's probably something against their way of thinking. Um, like an AI against it, or or maybe a group of people against their ideology, something like that. I don't know. Uh, That's what it uh, kind of sounds like. Yeah, um, it literally just sounds like, hey, we don't agree. Let's oppose each other yeah. in a in a structure that is a building. <laughs> uh, but uh, for anybody, yeah, who, anybody who doesn't know, uh, just as a quick 
a reminder, PvP is player versus player, so that would be just online mode against other people. Yep. Um, and then I, I was going to point out, does this, does this not sound like Titanfall? <laughs> online yeah. PvP will be able to support up to eight players with the addition of everyone's accessory partners, meaning the total number of characters per match rises to 16. So you have <laughs> eight players and six a- or an eight AI. From what I understood, the, the accessories don't do much, do they? I don't think so, but, you know, I don't know. It, it's, that's kind of silly, then. It's like, hey, there's these other characters that are running around making your machine do work, but well, I mean, they don't actually do anything. Like like in Titanfall, um, it's a way to get points for your team, probably, but not mm-hmm. as much as killing other players. So it's a way to, to get people who are not good at online games to be able to go in there and at least be able to kill the accessories and help their team... Uh, rather than just get killed by other players every two seconds and then just have a, you know, 0 and 15 KD. So, I, I, oh, but, but you get legendaries for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That, uh, that's a good segue. <laughs> segue into Destiny. I dislike you for taking the story. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I, you get uh, the next one. I, uh, yeah. I don't want the next one. Destiny is getting a patch. 1.0. Two this week. In fact, I actually think it it came out today or is coming out today. Uh, uh, not. It's what? It did not. It did not. Well, it still could come out today. I was okay. I was told Tuesday. Okay. okay. So, but then again, I could be wrong. Um, but uh, this uh, patch is going to change loot drops and engrams. Uh, the crypt art is going to be changed by legendary engrams will always produce legendary or better quality items, including materials or exotics. Uh, rare engrams will always produce rare or better quality items. Uh, rare engrams will have an increased chance to produce legendary quality items. Um, on that, on that kind of mindset, I have been hoarding my, uh, rare matter. engrams. And they are all worthless now. No, yep. why? Yep. It doesn't apply to things you get before the yep. patch comes out. You have I thought they, it. I thought they just said that the legendary stuff was going it's to drop every, down to rare. Everything I, you use was going to be worthless, basically. I, I know where you're coming from because I missed it at first too, but it actually says in the patch notes, like near the top, that rare and legendaries won't be yep. getting this. Anything anything you save yeah. from before the patch is going to be worthless um, because they, they just don't want you to, to be able to, to hoard them. Um, but I did like the little quote about if you're saving a legendary, they're like, <laughs> let's be honest, this is going to be a blue item anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, damn. It's like the you. Yeah. Sly one. Um, and then for the changes, uh, there's some activity changes. It says, uh, daily heroics, weekly heroics, and Vanguard Tiger playlist activities will include rare and legendary engrams in addition to their existing rewards. Um, and then some changes to the items. Uh, ascendant materials have been promoted to legendary or closer to associate them with the gear that they are used to upgrade. A legendary engram items that exist in your inventory will be demoted to rare quality when the patch goes live. So decode them while you can. Let's, oh yeah, here it is. But let's be honest. Even if you don't, we all know they were blues already. Um, but yeah, the Ascendant Materials thing uh, being promoted to Legendary, <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, yeah. Because that means that you can only get Ascendant stuff from Legendary Engrams. Um, uh, yeah. They're still going to be dropping from uh, Crucible randomly, and yeah. you can get them from your uh, doing public events now. Yeah, well, public events and then daily her- heroics and weekly heroics and all that stuff. You can still get it, but I mean from Engrams itself. You can, oh, yeah. you can only get them from, well, I guess rare or legendary, because rare can produce legendary also. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so those are the only two. You can no longer get those from any other kind or any other, I don't know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, so these are really, really good changes. Um, especially after last week, uh, where the loot cave was destroyed, um, which technically it's not destroyed because there are still other loot caves. Um, I still completely go to that loot cave every time for most of my bounties. The same one that we used before or that everybody used before? I don't think so. Um, it, I don't know which one everyone was using before, but the one I go to know. is right before, <laughs> cause I didn't go. I, I, <laughs> okay, I had not farmed beforehand. Okay. It's not much of a cave, so I, I highly doubt that it's the, it's the same place. I go to the, uh, right by the devil's lair strike. Mm-hmm. Oh, that place, yeah. That place. New loot cave. Yeah, there's a new loot cave back there in the rocket yard or whatever. Um, <laughs> and that works just as good as the first one because it's like every six seconds spawning or whatever. Uh, just like the other ones were. Um, but so yeah, so you can still farm them, but anyways, uh, that, it'll likely be patched out of, uh, sooner or later. Um, yeah, but so this is, uh, when it was first announced, people were using it for uh, loot 
farming, mm-hmm. uh, Bungie was like, yeah, we're, we're monitoring this now. It's like, oh, yeah. dang it, they're the government now. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're gonna be all over this kind of stuff. Because it's supposed to be an online game that everybody can go and have fun playing together and takes forever to do everything and not super <laughs> fast that you can break like that. Right, but I I can't really complain because as much as I love the game, the uh, loot drop systems are kind of broken. Yeah, uh, I disagree. Yeah, I, I think the tables could be used, could use some fixing. I think they y- there's some RNG stuff that they're fixing now at least, or they're working on it. But the yeah, just RNG is awful. I think, um, especially with a RNG. random the oh. random number generator. Oh, like with getting. Uh, you know, green materials from, from, uh, legendary or. Well, yeah, that's I've, being fixed, but that's not the loot drop. I don't, well, I don't think the loot drop system is broken at all. I think the loot drop fix or system is, is just fine as it is because it's, it's completely random. And, and even after like crucible matches, you know, I see these people complaining all the time. Oh, well, I, I wasn't, I was first on the match and I didn't get anything. And the person who was 0 and 15 got a legendary and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, well, I mean, that's because you're fucking awesome and you don't need it. You know, you're rocking out. And so, like, just fucking take that. Take the win. Well, take I, the I think they should still zero. get something. I think they should get, like, but maybe some do. crafting materials. They do. They just don't get it all the time. I've been right. top of the match several times. And I've got my exotic sniper that way. I've got most of my legendary gear. It's, you know, it's like, I, you know, I just don't, I don't understand people who I, complain about it. I think now, now that, uh, you actually turning in purple engrams will actually give you purple gear, guaranteed, I think a lot of people's complaints about the RNG, like the drop rates will be a little bit, Less. you know, blunted. Yeah, cause yeah. now, before it's like, yes, you rarely got legendaries, <gasps> and even then, when you turn them in, they you came get, out blue or yep, green. Yep, exactly. And now it'll be like, hey, Cryptarch, here's a purple. He'll be like, hey, here's a purple. I'm not no, a No, he'll be like, here's an ascendant shard. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, I was going to say that would help good. because you can level up stuff. But I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you. The, the drop system's fine, but it was the, it was the ingram thing that really, really ruined it for people because, you know, the, the once in a lifetime when they did get a purple, it wasn't purple. They didn't get the purple yeah. item out of it. And now they will every time. So. But I mean, in truth, we all know this is the internet. These are gamers. There's yeah. going to be complaints. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to happen. But yep. I mean, for, for us intelligent folks of high brow and good class, yes. we, we know things are getting better. <laughs> uh. All right, let's move on. All right, uh, so Number continuing six. the Destiny uh, rolling ball, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Ball rolling? Uh, Destiny theme. There we go. Rolling uh, Traveler. The, <laughs> uh, the expansion details uncovered were confirmed. Uh, Bungie Community Dan- Danager, Manager David Dog? Dake? I have no idea how to pronounce his name. Uh, I don't know. Yep, Deej. That's, that's his name, Deej. Uh, addressed the recent details about upcoming Destiny expansions. He says the names found are placeholders and may change prior to release. Deej also says that neither of the expansion packs are finished, though the first one will be completed soon. The Dark Below, Destiny's first add-on, is due in December, so I would hope it'll be completed soon. Just saying. <laughs> uh, the full form post follows. Hey, bunch of community. I hope you had a nice weekend. We noticed that you, uh, that you noticed that we already have plans for upcoming content packs in, in Destiny. We do. They have, God, they have, <laughs> they have activity names, which may or may not change. And we have a really good idea what they're going to contain. They even have placeholder nodes on the director. And that's the thing you use to pick your destination, by the way, as you've already discovered. But neither of the expansion packs we've announced are finished. People at Bungie are hard at work to complete content for our first post-launch pack, The Dark Below. As I type these words, it will, or as I type these words, it will be finished soon. It releases in December. Soon, we'll detail it out for you so you can see exactly what we've been working on. Thanks for playing. Thanks for the passion. We know you want details. We'll talk more soon. I love Deej. (laughs) So do I. He is like the best community manager I've ever seen in anything. Maybe because I can recognize him. There's very few people who I will even be able to recognize in a community for being a community manager. And he's so hands-on. I, I really enjoy that. I've never actually seen him before, but I Googled him. <laughs> yeah, I've, 
Well, yeah, I was gonna say I, I don't think I've ever seen him personally, like what he looks like or anything. But... Oh, I've looked him up at least. <laughs> I've looked him up. Um, yeah, no, I I do agree though. He's he's very very good at what he does. He's very personable. He he doesn't treat gamers like shit or anything or like we don't know things. It's he's really really good at what he does. I I, I really like him. Um, and I, I remember I saw this leak or whatever uh, over the weekend. Or whenever it originally broke and the video that went up with all the, the stuff that was, what was there, like a, a strike on the moon called, you know, the end of Crota or was that a story mission? And, uh, uh, I thought it was a raid. I didn't actually uh, watch the video. Though, yeah, but... maybe. I don't, I don't remember. All I know is there's a giant conspiracy theory going around Reddit right now. What? <laughs> about. You're talking about the story change? Um, about, yeah, <laughs> about all that. I was gonna say that's, uh, that's actually a, that's a story going on right now. It's not a not just a, a rumor or conspiracy theory on yeah. Reddit. Um, but yeah, to mention that real quick, that's I, I, if you're talking about the story change, it's it's rumored right now that when the writer original writer for Destiny left uh, last year, they basically scrapped the entire story, um, or or not scrapped it, but severely cut it down. Um, took out all the big chunks. Um, and then earlier this year, hired a new writer just to write the grimoire, um, which is why it's not actually in the game itself and only on browsers or the app, because they didn't have enough time to include everything that is the grimoire onto the game. Um, and so most of the story chunks and the meat is actually in the grimoire. Uh, and then there is evidence pointed at uh, that there was a, a player or a CPU and, and it was supposed to be called the Crow, uh, in the game. And he was supposed to be like leading a faction, I believe, against the speaker and the traveler. He felt that the speaker and the traveler brought the darkness into the solar system. And so he was trying to go against them. And I guess there was either a demo or a video showing off him a year ago in some of the missions that we actually do in the game now. But he's just no longer in the game. So like we did those missions when we all beat the story, but he's just not there anymore. And so we nobody knows why he was scrapped and why all that. Um, and apparently there was supposed to be more factions on the tower, and it was supposed to be kind of like a faction war. Like, like um, we kind of know how they're against each other. What in terms of the factions, those are still there. Well, yeah, the three are. But no, I, there are there are other factions in the city. You can hear them talking about it. Oh, okay. and in the uh, grimoire, you can actually There's read two more right? that. Um. Yeah, there's two more currently because uh, it there actually was a faction war b- before Destiny happened. Like, and oh, you yeah. can read about it in the Grimoire. But all and that they, was they, sorry, they nearly on. ripped apart the city, and it's still there because, like, uh, I know at one point I heard Shax, and he was talking about uh, uh God, one of the factions. They're just not on the tower; they're in the uh, city below. That's all there is to it. Uh, yeah. So I assume they'll eventually show up. <laughs> yeah, they could, and and that was well. But part of this leak was something about those factions and, and this war, this fight, still actually being in the game. Like it was, there was supposed to be remnants of it or something. Like more so than it is now, than just a CPU you walk by and hear them mention something. Um, and it just, I don't know everything about this whole leak. It was from some guy who was part of the test group or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything about it sounds fucking awesome, and it's just like God, like why. Why was all this cut? And like, are they going to add it in with the expansion? You know, like there's so much stuff, story details that we're missing out on. And this could be the reason why the story feels so empty right now. Well, the reason why I say it's a conspiracy theory at the moment is because earlier today, Deej went, or it was either earlier today or yesterday, Deej came out of the woodwork and said that, because this guy said that he either was a Bungie employee or worked very closely with Bungie in developing it. And, um, he said that that's not the case, that, um, this person's merely just trolling based off of the few news stories he must have read last year. Um, and I mean, some of it, some of it can be true. There were some news stories about, uh, the story creators leaving at some point. Um, yeah, there, that was actually a thing that happened. Right. The, the lead but, writer left. Yeah, but that said, I, I don't know that, that, these these things that we saw in the trailer aren't going to happen still. I mean, they could still be content that's coming in DLC, which... I mean, it, it's only 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So, okay, here it is. 
da 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 outlined a story sprawling across a considerably larger solar system, including a number of characters and factions who never so much as appear in the full game. The prime example of this is Crow, a character faction who was set to expose the Traveler and Speaker for, in fact, bringing the darkness along with the Traveler and not the Golden Age. A specific reference to the Crow can be found in the video above at the 1.01 mark, where the mission would have you assist Crow in looting the archive on Venus for details of the Vex Gate Lord, which is, in fact, a mission we end up doing in the main game, but Crow is clearly not in it. Um, blah, 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 PvP. We see a reference to the justification and ex- explanation for the different factions in the tower was cut as well, even in PvP, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the story writer. Destiny's current half ass story starts to make a little more sense when we apply the context of the entire narrative. When the narrative, the entire narrative was gutted less than a year before launch and remade without Bungie's lead writer, writer, why Joe left and why Bungie felt the need to completely cut the story and cut huge areas is beyond me, but it's abundantly obvious that there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Um, and anyways, this guy said that, uh, yeah, that was a funny Transformers. little Transformers thing. <laughs> then there's the grimoire part I mentioned. Um, but the part I was going to say is that I don't believe he ever said that he worked for Bungie. Um, oh my god, he just keeps adding edits in here. Um, ha, ha, ha. Da, da, da. While you're reading, I just hope that all of this shows up eventually because uh, the grimoire is amazing. Like this, the writing in that the I don't know what you call it, but the writing in it is just great. Like uh, the story with Cade Six and the Fallen Baron, uh, the story of I don't even know who it is. I want to know more about Akora Ray too. She seems really awesome. I don't want to vamp alone, though. Right. Well, how about we move on? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm all right with that. That's you. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm still reading this stuff because I wanted to prove you wrong. <laughs> because he did not say that he worked for Bungie. He was a part of a test group is what I was what I heard or what I believe I read. But anyways, I'll just forget about it. Uh, okay. So, number seven, Rocksmith 2014, the guitar learning software is being ported to both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, according to Ubisoft's blog. It's scheduled for release on both consoles on November 4th, 2014. The new version touts 1080p HD, integrating performance sharing and remote play for the PlayStation 4. Uh, remote play? Interesting. How do you remote play this? That's what I was oh. wondering. Maybe you could Bluetooth your guitar to your Vita? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Purchase DLC will be transferred or can be transferred from the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 to the Xbox One and PS4, respectively. Additionally, skills will also transfer. However, game progress will not. Whoever wrote this story did not capitalize the S in PlayStation on 4 or 3. <sighs> Sigh. Anyways, um, I don't really care do, about Do people still play Rocksmith? I don't know. I don't care. I, know I think it's a like, really interesting idea. True. And yeah. it was big when it came out, or was announced at least, but I don't mm-hmm. know. I definitely do not play it. I stopped playing music games back on... Uh, Rock Band 2? Was that when was that a thing? I don't even remember. Yeah. It may have been Rock Band 2, like, the year it was released. Or was that recent? Because I don't even know. Let me see. Uh, that was a while ago. Yeah. Rock Band 2. I haven't seen a peripheral in forever. 2008. Okay, so yeah, it's been 2008 since I've played been a long ass time. I don't really care anymore. Ah, <sighs> move on. Uh, I just want to say that what they're doing with the DLC is kind of awesome. Just oh, saying. yeah, that's totally cool. I really like that. Next on the list. <laughs> this week's Ubisoft uh this week Ubisoft launched Project Window, an interactive experience centered around the sights and sounds of Assassin's Creed Unity. Project Window aims to bring an explorative touch to the biggest French tourist destinations, especially those linked to the French Revolution. The experience is narrated by Andy Serkis. Is that, sir, is I, that right? He know. sounds like a character from Destiny. Sure. Uh, <laughs> as visitors experience uh, the Bastille, Not- uh, Notre Dame, and, oh, Pla- is it Place de la Concorde? Place? Sure. Lotch? No idea. I don't know. I know Bastille. Speak. Bastille Day is actually my birthday. Everyone oh. tells me that every year. In addition, the site throws in some assets from the game. I like this. I think I really appreciate when video game developers and publishers go out and make cross-media experiences. Um, we saw this with uh, Infamous Second Son, with the Infamous Paper Trail. We saw this with uh, Destiny, even. They had their own ARG. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I and, think it's cool. Yeah, I do. I think it's really cool. Um, will I ever use it? I don't know. 
but yeah, it's it's not selling me on the game at all. But, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's a cool <laughs> thing. Like I'm excited for the game. Oh wait, let me take part in this extra thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, someone someone loves this. Someone oh, yeah. out there is like losing it about this. There are definitely people who like the second screen experience kind of thing, the extra stuff. Who will who will go batshit crazy over this? You know, oh there's people God. out there who just love uh, Google Street View. Yeah, those and are like fun. crazy. I'm, I'm with that. You 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 think Google Street View is fun? I mean, sometimes like just I like just like every now and then I'll just open it up and go through like some a certain area, not because I've never been there and I want to see it, but because I want to see if there's something stupid that was happening while they were taking the pictures. <laughs> oh my God! I guess I just do not know what it's like to have free time. <laughs> Uh, I've only ever used Google Street View to, like, when I'm looking up an address or whatever for something that I'm, I've never been to. And I'm like, all right, yeah. what the fuck does the building look like? <laughs> and that's that's literally the only thing I've ever used it for. So, I don't know. I, I, I guess uh, once I looked up my mom's house uh, and, I, and I was able to – the, the picture was taken – Whenever all of our cars were in her driveway, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's cool. That was still that was when I was still living there." But uh, I think that's the only other time I've used it. Moving on. Okay. Moving yes. on. You don't have to make it so awkward. Okay. okay. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Just moving move on. on. United Front Games, the developer of Sleeping Dogs, released a trailer for their next game, Triad Wars. They described the game as set in a vibrant city of Hong Kong and uh, Sleeping Dogs universe. The Triad Wars is an online open world action adventure PC game. That is a lot of genres <laughs> where you rise to the power as a criminal <clears throat> kingpin of the triad underworld experience the unrivaled combination of fighting shooting and driving and succeed through strategy via extortion hacking and money laundering it's your city to claim and how you do it is entirely up to you no release date was given but applications were solicited for the closed beta on their website you can find that on uh, our story about it yeah so um, this sounds like watchdogs it is it's <laughs> Well, kind of. <laughs> Sleeping mean, Dogs, more dogs. gang related. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't played Sleeping Dogs, so uh, I'm waiting for the uh, HD remake. <laughs> yeah, you gonna buy it for sixty? Uh, maybe I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> I I'm not buying it for sixty. Like um, I uh, I picked up Tomb Raider for sixty. I could have grabbed that for twenty bucks, but I wanted something to play on my PS4. Well, I bought Tomb Raider for. PS4 also when it went on sale for 17.99 last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. So but... I'm you know, this, I uh, you know unless these games were you know uh, huge huge awesome games that I really really love, there's no way I'm going to buy an HD remake for 60. So like you know The Last of Us for 50 dollars might I add was definitely a buy for me because it was such a huge game and my favorite game and all that stuff. However, even though I loved the shit out of Tomb Raider, there was no way in hell I was paying $60 for it. I never played it to begin with, so... Yeah, but I didn't play Sleeping Dogs, and that's what I'm trying to say, is that I don't think that Sleeping Dogs is just justifiably a $60 game, when I do have it for free from PlayStation Plus on PS3. Oh, do you know what? I might have that. In that case, I won't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So... It's like, why would I want to spend sixty dollars just to make it look a little? I need bit like a list of every PlayStation Plus game I have right. because it's it is so ridiculous that like I just can't even remember like full title games. I haven't even touched um that PlayStation All Stars game, and that's something I want I've wanted to play since it come out. Yeah, I I I, well, I I rented it closer to when it came out or whatever, so I was able to play it, but. I mean, there are so many games. There's probably 80% of the games I have on PS Plus that I have not played yet. Play Velocity 2X. Um, eventually. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will, normally, I will not accept that answer, but this is a special season. We got a new question, by the way. I'm going to add it in. Sounds good. Okay. Um, next story. Uh, 4J Studios, the team handling Minecraft, PlayStation Vita, tweeted out that it has passed it off to Sony for final testing and certification. Yeah. An exact, <laughs> an exact re- release date has not yet been given, uh, but it is a good sign that it should be available soon. <laughs> Minecraft for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One hit digital storefronts last month for $19.99 and, or $4.99 for those who purchased it on the last gen console and got the upgrade. 
A retail version for the PlayStation 4 is also on its way. Uh, those who purchase Minecraft for the PlayStation 3 will also be able to pick it up for Vita for free whenever it is finally released. Um, this is certainly going to make Greg Miller happy. <laughs> Definitely. He talks, uh, God, every week on Podcast Beyond, he mentions it, I believe. It's kind of like how he used to mention um, Patapon every Pat-a-pon. week. Yeah, yeah, every that- fucking week. I want Patapon to come back. It was, That's a really great game. Yes, it is. It was always a uh, um, Shuhei. You need to make it so where we can change the names on P- our PlayStation or PSN or whatever. And then he'd always be like, and then bring Patapon. Bring Patapon 3 or whatever the next one is. I don't even know. Did they make it too? Yes. Ah, okay. It was really good. I see. I've never played either. I don't, I don't know. You should. They're fun. You owe it to yourself. Yeah, whenever I have time again. <laughs> again. It's not on a Vita, is it? You can only grab it on PSP? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I have no idea. You Can you not download it on PSN for Vita, but the uh, PSP version? I don't, I don't think so. I think if I could do that, I would have done that. <laughs> but you don't know how many games you have on PS Plus, so... What are the odds you just have it checked? This is a more reliable judgment system. <laughs> Has Lou done it if he really would? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so uh, next, 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 next. So, uh, all the kids in the world are, well, they're not kids now, they're like 20s and 30s. Uh, everyone's excited. The digital version of the Pokemon trading card game is now available for iPad today. What? Get it. Play it. You know, especially everyone who used to collect the cards and didn't actually know how to play. Uh, the game has been out on PC and Mac for a while when the iPad version was revealed last month by the way of Josh Wittenkeller, a famous Pokemon YouTuber. Uh, Pokemon trading card game for iPad connects to your PC or Mac profile so your decks and cards will carry over to your iPad. Like Hearthstone and other popular digital card games, players can collect cards by earning them or purchasing them. However... With the Pokemon Training Card Game, players can also get cards through codes that come packaged with the physical cards. Yay! Yay! All right, and moving on to the last story. Nintendo, oh, I've got to find it. There we go. Nintendo released firmware update 5.2.0 U for the Wii U. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in that. <laughs> anyway, uh, you'll now be able to create folders in which you can keep your games and apps. It also adds a function to hide software uh, on the quick start menu. There's also a new download management icon in the menu. Um, I really, really like this. Uh, I've been asking, me and my friends have been asking for Wii U folders forever because it's on the 3DS. I have no clue why they couldn't do it on the Wii U. Until now. Until now. God knows. But yeah. So This needs to be applied to every console. Oh, folders yeah, are fantastic. Everything. Folders. Bring it to PlayStation, please. Though I think <sighs> you should, they should have a ton of different like folder icons, not just like normal folders. Because mm-hmm. if there was a folder icon, for instance, with the consoles on it, like if it was just a picture of a Super Nintendo icon, I would put all my Super Nintendo games in that. I, w- I would love like customized folders instead of just the shitty looking folders. Yeah, I mean like, it used to be on, on Xbox 360, and I'm not sure if it is anymore, and I'm not sure if they, they added that to uh, Xbox One, but you used to be able to hook it up to your PC, and then you could bring over any pictures, videos, music. You could transfer all of that over uh, to your to your hard drive and then use that stuff for things, and like that would be really fucking cool. If you could just you could bring over pictures and just make those into, into icons or whatever. And even if that wasn't the case, even if they provided just a bunch of different, you know, folder options or, or folder picture options and stuff like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. It would be cool. Uh, All right. So that wraps up the news from nowhere. And then let's move into the, the review wrap up. Lewis. Wrap up the wrap up. The wrap up reviews. Um, I'm excited. You guys cover one of each, one in three. Call Wasteland. Uh, Okay. I have three actually already. Ah, uh, he did. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Go, go first, Lou. <laughs> go first. Damn it. You're the okay. only one from the Northeast anyways. This one applies to you more than us. I'm black. I don't know anything about hockey. <laughs> I'm from Kansas. I don't know anything about hockey. I play video games. I don't know anything about sports. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> NHL 15 got a 7.3 out of 10. It was reviewed by our dear Mike Bertrand. Um <laughs> I made that sound like he was actually a deer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Our, our deer, or our doe. We, our pet deer who just, uh, we named him. And he writes, it's fantastic, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we despite losing. <laughs> Go on. 
He says, despite losing some very significant game modes, NHL 15 is still a great hockey sim and, more importantly, a great time. While the missing features will drive some players away, some things will be making a return before the next iteration comes out and some in future releases. Despite all of that, NHL 15 still stands as one of the best sports games on the market. What? So it's an okay review. I have never played an NHL game and I don't like hockey, so. I, I don't play any sports game. That's not true. I used to play uh, backyard baseball. Ah, oh, there you go. That, it was kind of racist. What? It was okay. Really, it was really racist. Oh, I mean, the game was. Yeah, backyard oh. baseball. Like all the just, good players are black. Is that what you're saying? On black, there was the Mex- Mexican oh, the kid, Mexican Pedro. Base, yeah, Mexican baseball. Oh my players. god! <laughs> and there was the guy in the wheelchair. He was actually a pretty boss. <laughs> Okay, so the next one uh, mentioned <laughs> mentioned last week, uh, but like I said, it hadn't been hadn't actually been published yet, and no score on it. Um, but I did finish up the review for Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution. Uh, I gave it a seven point seven out of ten. Uh, my verdict goes a little like this: Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution offers a lot for fans of the series. Uh, besides the good but short story mode, the tournament offers players a chance to lose several hours battling familiar ninja faces and fighting your way through the tournament ranks. However, if you are more of a fan of the story content, then just battling this game really isn't for you. Uh, the features that make Revolution a must-play for fans of the series is the fact that it has a cast of over 100 playable characters, uh, oh. several different modes to play, uh, such as all the different battle like tournaments and battle modes and stuff to uh, handicap yourself or other players, uh, and even an in- interesting side story about Mecha Naruto. Uh, this year's iteration in the Ultimate Ninja Storm series was a good one, but overall felt a little lackluster. Believe it. As a direct quote from Naruto. Yeah. Are you proud of yourself? You have to say it like that. Fuck yeah, man. Believe it. (laughs) There you go. Uh, I'm still not proud of you. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it was a fun game. It was really fun. Uh, But uh, like, kind of like what I I had said in the actual review was one of the tournament modes. Like the biggest part about the game was this open island that you could go on and and battle friends or battle your you know ninja friend kind of things and make them join your team and do quests and stuff like that and then per, or uh get into tournaments whenever you felt you were ready and stuff like that it just felt like a glorified menu you know like oh i'm picking to go to this story mission or i'm going to pick to the, go to this mission where they don't actually talk there's no voice acting but i get to read text and run back and forth on the island just to battle them again and again and again oh well i feel like i'm ready for a tournament now i'm going to go participate in a tournament it just felt like it was a giant menu but instead of scrolling down and up and over and stuff i had to run around an island which would take 10 minutes to get to and from things I was like, this is really, really, really boring. Uh, but the story mode content was good. The battle system was good. It's all there. Good. <laughs> Sub Steve Jutsu. Now, Wasteland 2 is uh, another review that Are we have this week. Are you happy that you just did that? Did that make No, I'm not. Better? I'm never happy, and you know that. Uh, it got an 8.7 <laughs> out of 10. It was also reviewed by resident Servine, Mike Bertrand. So, as he put it, as a strapping young lad, my parents believed consoles were the devil. So I grew up on PC games, and strategy RPGs were my favorites. Wasteland 2 captures everything that was great about the games of the 1990s. It's like coming home again, like meeting an old friend, or having your grandma bake you cookies. It feels like I remember those old PC games. It, it feels like I remember those old PC games. Felt. Okay. Uh, many of them don't hold up very well, and their flaws show glaringly with age. But Wasteland 2 was built with the benefit of the, that experience, so it doesn't suffer from that affliction. I can't even count how many times it turned what started as, out as a sigh into a, huh? They fixed that. If you have a PC that can run it, you should be playing this game. Uh, yeah, I've heard good things about this. Yeah, one. I've heard really good things about it. And apparently it's selling really well, too. So that's that's good news. Revival. However, I'm not interested in playing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Not at the moment. PC um, game. Maybe, maybe well. sometime in the future. I, oh, yeah? It's just too many things. Yeah. A lot of things. Super I'm Smash Bros. Play Shadow Run. A lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. in three days. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. <laughs> True that, though. That's crazy. I can't believe it's already here. Okay, so that wraps up the re- <laughs> review wrap-up. <laughs> Let's move on uh-huh. to the second question, where we have uh, four questions, it looks like. Uh, from Toon Day. Num- the first question is... Pronounced Toon Day. Pronounced Toon Day. Um... With the recent uh, announcement of all the DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity and Shadow of Mordor, I know Shadow of Mordor will only be out by the, or will already be out by the time this is read, 
so close to the release date. What is your take on releasing DLC before the game comes out? <clears throat> Do you think it sends a message? The message. Oh, excuse me. I just burped. Do you think it sends a message that content was cut from the disc to charge extra few an extra few dollars from the initial purchase? Hmm. This is a uh-huh. long argued uh, predicament in the gaming industry. That Let's just pick a side and argue it. This always comes up. Um, okay. You I'm, pick a side, I'll do devil's advocate. Well, I, I can argue both sides too. That's the problem. Uh, I think okay. everyone can argue both sides. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, most if of the content, most of the content that comes out for these things isn't necessarily story content. It's di- like a different story. You know, yeah. uh, not all the time. Uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it actually is a continuation of the story or like a side story or like in one case, uh, I think it was a Final Fantasy game. Or it was some game. No, it was Assassin's Creed. It was one of the Assassin's Creed games where they actually like there was chapters, you know, uh, fragment chapters, and they just completely left out one of the fragments, like one of the chapters, and they included that as DLC later. Like it was chapter oh. nine or something like that out of thirteen. You know, it's thirty. You, you couldn't play that one. You just missed all of that. Um, but but if it's side story stuff, you know, uh, yeah, it's it seem it kind of feels like they're money grabbing. Um, obviously it is that that is what they're doing. You know, the DLC is not necessarily for players to play more in most cases. In most cases, that's literally for them to get more money. Um, and so that 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 is where I'm going to take the stance right now, um, just for the sake of taking one. Uh, I see the other side, but but they normally these games are produced well in advance or they have uh, another team working on DLC um, just to get extra money, especially... Um, oh, God, it's... See, I can argue both sides. One reason for... De- um, one reason for releasing DLC so close to the release date of the game is because so many gamers sell the game back within three weeks or two weeks. You know, they beat the game, they're done with it, they sell it back, or if they're renting it, they send it back or they take it back. Um, so if they have DLC ready to go and announced or, uh, like prior to release or scheduled for release soon after release or day of, that is because they know that there are people who are going to send it back or sell it back or things like that, and they want to get that extra money out of those people before they do that. Uh, I'd like to subscribe to the theory that I'm pretty sure is wrong, that just like between the time they have where they send stuff in for like ESRB to look at and for uh, going gold and the time of the actual release, they've just had time to make some extra stuff, and that's what the DLC is. That's my like babies come in storks explanation for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Now, so. I I just I can't even think of any recent games that have released the first day with like major story DLC. Uh, as, yeah, and as long as it's not like major, I don't see the problem with it. Be completely honest, right? Like, if it's if it's something that's not integral to the story that you can like c- play the game for like years without ever needing to know, who cares? If you don't want it, don't buy it. <laughs> Uh okay. Let's no, I'm not, I'm I'm not angry with you at Tune Day. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, right. next one. Read uh, it. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, hey guys, it's me. This is Ryan, by the Mario. way. Mario. Uh, oh, Ma- no, it's, it's me, Mario. Ryan. <laughs> I wish it were Mario. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I figured you may already have discussed this on the show, but I'll throw it in here just in case. All the talk has been on Destiny. Much of the outcry being negative for so many reasons. I won't even begin to list them. Uh, I am personally loving the game, so there's that. But do you think all of the outcry is seriously going to affect the game's g- the game going forward and how Bungie treats it? I don't want to see it drastically change to make it appeal to all the haters, though there's obvious room for improvement. Uh, sound off if you like Mong. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's a negative talk about everything, and Bungie has been changing things, so there haven't been anything like that. Just makes destiny a new game but yeah i I think the um i think bunch is a smart company i think that they're gonna do what they think is right to keep within the framework of the game they want to make um i honestly like people complain about the um the loot for instance, that was like a legitimate issue that Mm -hmm. that i think bungie realized and did address Mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't think we're suddenly going to see a a whole game swap where they're going to patch in the stories. 
Um, however, they're absolutely going to listen to the fact that we want to see more story content and have more of a narrative, and I'm sure they're going to incorporate it later on in the game. I, I just don't think that we're suddenly not going to have the destiny we know and love right now. We're just going to have a better destiny that we know and love. Yeah. Also, I'm you... oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, no, that's all I was in, just agreeing. Uh, I was going to say that uh, also you have to think about it. Some of this negative outcry is simply from people who, like, you know, played it for like five minutes and then decided they weren't going to enjoy it exactly. and put it down. You have to think that like, yeah, there are some issues with the game, but some people are just overreacting because they don't actually know what the game is about. So, And it's always, it's the often talked about negative minority, the yeah. loud negative minority. Uh, these aren't the majority of people, but these are the really, really, really loud haters who will say that about anything, who will just destroy anything or just don't like one part of the game, therefore it's broken, such yeah. as the the loot drop or whatever or the reward system in Crucible. I've seen that talked about so much recently, and it's not bad. And these people yeah, are I think that's ridiculous. saying that Destiny is the worst game ever and they're, stop, they're going to stop playing because they lead every single match and they have a 20 and 6 KD, you know, and they always win or they always lose even though they have that top KD, but they don't ever get any rewards. And it's just like, okay, whatever. But yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think Destiny is going to change very much. Um, they're going to obviously do minor fixes, you know, like this, the Ingram thing. They're going to update things, broken parts, and the farming stuff. You know, they're going to update that stuff, but they're not going to drastically change Destiny. Destiny is going to be the same game. It's always yep. going to be the same game with minor fixes here and there. They have a dream for what they're making, and they're listening to gamers. Exactly. So exactly, they have a timeline of things that they're going to add in, and then minor improvements are going to come here and there whenever they find them. Which is why yep. you see them on the forums, why you see them listening and replying to stuff all the time. <coughs> all right, next question. Okay. Next question. This one I'm going to read? Yeah. I should read yeah. this. I haven't done it. Okay. Uh, this one comes from Dennis. Uh, he said, no. Is it Dennis? No. no. You, no. Sean? Oh. Uh, okay. I'm not, I'm not looking at the same thing you have. Anyway, uh, this comes from Sean. <laughs> he says, do you think the state of licensed games is changing, especially with Shadow of Mordor and South Park The Stick of Truth getting good reviews? Yes. yes. I think it's been changed. Yeah, it's, it's – obviously that's not 100% the case because there's still going to be Transformers every year that's going to be shit uh, based off hey. every movie. I'm talking okay. about the movie-based games, okay. not, the, okay. not the ones that aren't based off the movie because obviously want... there are other ones. War for Cybertron, yeah. you know, excellent yeah. game. Or any Marvel-based yeah. uh, game. Yeah. Hey. There are, Ultimate Alliance is fun. There are some really, 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 really good licensed games now. Um, but Batman. that being said, they're not licensed games in the sense that, uh, we've come to know in the past, like I was just referring to. They're not licensed off of a movie. You know, these are just, um, they're using the assets. They're using the story, uh, of like the original story and they're just making side stories. They're doing stuff like that. They're making, uh, content, brand new content based off of a universe rather than making a movie based game or a TV show based game. Um, and, and that's where we're seeing the difference and sh which is why Shadow of Mordor is, is doing so well. It's not an actual story that's been told before. Uh, it's a brand new game. It's, you know, and that's why, sh uh, South Park was so well is it was just a fan service game. You know, it was a yep. silly little RPG that was based off the story and had references to the story. Um, but it was, it was new content, brand new content. Yeah. Developers and publishers, they're just starting to understand that shovelware is not as, as acceptable anymore. So it's not nearly, no, it's not at all. I, I mean, it's right. not at all, but they, you know, there's always going to be those people who just go out and buy it. Like maybe a grandmother's like, Oh, <laughs> little Jimmy loves transformers. Let's <laughs> buy him this one. And so, you know, they, there's always going to be those people that just kind of like slip through the net, but gamers as a whole are not going to keep buying the crap that's just like, hey, it's this movie and a disc, buy it. Yeah, and again, or, or to add on to all this uh, is to say that uh, South Park and Shadow of Mordor differ in, in one, one area, and that is South Park had an incredible amount of hype, incredible amount of hype, and it still was able to live up to it. Shadow yeah. of Mordor did not. And Shadow, it's living up to it. Yep. Yeah, well, Shadow of Mordor has benefited greatly from not having the hype that Destiny had. Destiny has been getting slammed all over the place by critics. Um, and yet every single one of them says, as much as I hate Destiny, I can't stop playing it. Every single yeah. one of them. Every fucking one of them. 
Because this game's horrible, but I can't stop playing it. Even and, Moriarty. Yeah, and it's just, it's ridiculous. And, and, and that is because of the hype. Shadow of Mordor. No hype. Everyone was like, I don't know about this game. I don't know. This game could be really bad. This game could be good. It sounds cool, but whatever. You know, I guess we'll wait and see. And then it's come out and it's been a good game. It's probably not a 9-5. You know, it's probably not a 10 that everybody has been giving it. But it didn't have hype and people were so blown away with it that it's just like, oh, wow, this is actually a really good game. This is fun. But it's, it's, it's benefited so much from that. That's side note, obviously. That's not, has nothing to do with the license part of it. But, yeah. but that, that has to do with it getting a good review. So, next question? Next question. Okay, uh, I'll go. Okay. Uh, from Jake. Jake Kyle, might, might I add. Uh, yes, if Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo announce that they are shutting their doors, but before they do, they're going to a game... Wait, they're going to a game company to release one last game on each console. Who do you want the... Com- who do you want to the... Who do you want the companies to be, and what would the games be? Okay, so, so a Sony exclusive, a Microsoft exclusive, and a Nintendo exclusive. Let's all grab one. I call Nintendo. Well, <laughs> okay. I guess I'll grab Microsoft. I, I was don't... gonna. I was gonna say that leaves me and Miles with Sony and Microsoft when both of us clearly like PlayStation better. It's like I'll well, grab. You know, I'll grab Microsoft. Why don't we just name one real quick? Like I don't. I don't. Okay. okay. Sony, obviously, I say go to Naughty Dog. Um, I don't know what kind of game, honestly. You know, like, wh- how can I say it? I don't want to say The Last of Us 2, but, you know, like, that's clearly my favorite game, but I don't know if I want a sequel to that, and I wouldn't want their last game to be Uncharted. Um, it's just, that's, that's hard for me to say. Um, so, yeah, I just say go to Naughty Dog, give us a new IP. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you want me to do Xbox? I'll do how Xbox. How about everybody just say a Sony one? I I just have a new IP for everything. That's all I'm okay. yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. I want <laughs> I want Microsoft to go to Bethesda. Mm, yeah. I think that they have a solid history working together and uh Bethesda games always work better on Xbox consoles for some reason. Um and Conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> um that said if they were like all right, here's the last game ever Xbox One play Fallout 4. <laughs> that would be a good way. Lose their minds. That would be the perfect ending. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. Microsoft should go to Bethesda. That would be a great one. However, I kind of want to troll here. Um, <laughs> since Xbox One is such a colossal failure this generation, <laughs> I think that Microsoft should not ask Bethesda to make their last exclusive game before they shut their doors because they're such a colossal failure. I think that Microsoft should go to Nintendo and ask Nintendo to make them an exclusive game. And it, I don't know, like Nintendo has all kinds of great exclusives, even if it's Mario or something. You know how cool that would be? Like I, I've, all, I've long been an advocate advocate for Nintendo being a software-only company and to produce their games on other consoles, uh, that would be cool. That would be like a, a freaking huge... It, this would be the final fantasy of Microsoft. Microsoft is like, hey, we're closing our doors, guys. Uh, here's Nintendo's awesome Mario 2. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, that blew up. Now we're Mario 3 and 4 and 5 or something like that, and Microsoft just blows up again. Pokemon PS4. Fantasy world I am in right now. Yeah, Pokemon PS4 would be awesome. I don't know about Nintendo. Nintendo released, you know, that, that would it. That would be it. Pokemon, full Pokemon RPG on Wii U. Yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. That, that's my answer too. <laughs> full on Pokemon RPG. To be fair, if someone does that, you never have to play another game again. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Last, Last question. question. All right. What are you excited for in the new 3DS models and updates coming? I assume that updates coming pertains to 3DS models. Uh, As for the 3DS models, I don't really care. But that question I mean, comes from Chris on Facebook. Oh, my bad. It, co- it comes from Chris. <laughs> uh, what are you excited for in the new 3DS models and updates coming? Uh, I mean, I but it's... <laughs> the buttons. I'm all about the buttons, bro. I like the second bu- the bumper. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess the, uh, the, the extra circle pad is really nice now that I think about it. All right, I got two things that I really, really enjoy. Um, I like the CPU because mm. I'm a 
I'm a tech person and yep. I, I just love the idea that it's going to ru- run faster. It's going to download everything faster. Um, more importantly though, and this is weird for me because I normally hate this feature. I can't wait for that expanded range 3D. Um, because I never play with the 3D on ever because I, I get so annoyed by just moving it slightly and everything going out of whack. I've heard, uh, when I was listening to the people on Nintendo Voice Chat, who were, of course, at Tokyo Game Show, and they were talking about their experience with it. They said that you can move it any direction, and they don't know how it works, if it's eye tracking or whatnot, but it'll stay with you the entire time, and I think that's incredible. That is cool. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the game releases this week before we wrap up the podcast. Um, <laughs> it's a big week for releases. Uh, this is officially the start of the busy season. Can I call uh, PC? You want to what? Uh, what? You, you take him a PC? Oh no, you can do the PC. I know you love the PC. Okay, so on PlayStation Three this week, we've got uh, Invisimals, The Lost Kingdom, uh, Pier, Solar, and the Great Architects. Uh, uh, which Colin Moriarty is giving away on Twitter right now. Oh really? Cool. Yep. Get it. Um, and then, well, by the time this goes live, everyone will probably be over, won't it? Oh, yeah, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> okay, and the next one, uh, short piece, Renko Tsukijima's longest day. Right. 25 um, hours. And then Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. And the Natural Doctrine, uh, Falling Skies, the game, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, which <coughs> I've actually heard is really good. It's strange, huh. strange, but really good. Um, and then Watch Dogs Bad Blood. I assume that's DLC. I think that is. It yep. is. Uh, and then on PlayStation 4, we've got Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Pierre yep. Solar and the Great Architects, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, Natural, Natural Doctrine, uh, Futuridium EP Deluxe, uh, and then Watch Dogs Bad Blood. And then on Vita, we've got Invisimals The Alliance, Natural Doctrine, and Futuridium EP Deluxe. All right. Now... For the Xbox 360, we have Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Falling Skies, the game, (laughs) Forza Horizon 2, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, Watch Dogs, Bad Blood. (coughs) (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) He dies. Uh, For Xbox One, we have Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, Forza Horizon 2. Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, Watch Dogs, Bad Blood, and Chariot, the one we mentioned earlier. Oh, Chariot. I was going to reference that earlier, but I decided <laughs> not to. Oh, golden wings. Oh, God. Go on. Uh, and for PC, we have Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, Pierre Solar and the Grand Architects, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, Watch Dogs, Bad Blood. Super Win, the game. Silence of the Sleep. Metal Slug X. Left in the Dark, no one on board. Metal Dead. Albedo, Eyes from Outer Space. And Ares, Extinction, uh, Extinction, <laughs> Extinction, <laughs> Extinction Agenda X. You EX. sound, dude, you sound like a, like a 48 year old cop who's been smoking cigars his entire life. Or do I have to like counterbalance this now? Do I have to like speak in an absurdly high voice? Think- Wee you! <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> you might as well be a Nintendo character when you do it. Anyway, um, on the Wii U, Mario. we're get, we're grabbing, uh, Falling Skies, the game. That is racist. Um, <laughs> god. <laughs> and we're also getting 99 seconds. So, I don't no, know what it that is. Been, it would have been really racist if he said Mario. <laughs> See, I that's, that's that. a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, move on. I hated it. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> on the 3DS, we're getting Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS, which totally disqualifies every other game this week. Just saying. Most Just of them, saying. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll see how it is. Coming from Lou, and since it's a Nintendo game, I assume it's probably going to be a 9-5 or above. <laughs> <laughs> for me um i don't know i haven't tried it yet i didn't play the demo <laughs> what really? uh, well don't break your slide your slide button or yeah i'm gonna <laughs> I, i'm going in there now and i know not to uh bang it around too much <laughs> that's what she said oh, oh, oh. 
All right, oh, so that wraps, that wraps up episode 53 of the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. As usual, we record on Tuesdays and then release later that day in the evening. Normally, you can email us at mong.podcast at gmail.com or at contact.mong at gmail.com. You can find our Twitter at mong.com, all spelled out, dot ncom. And you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash mongnetwork. And then on Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram by just searching for Middle of Nowhere Gaming. Ah, and then you could find the website at middleofnowheregaming.com for all of our latest editorials, news, and reviews. Once again, we are looking for new writers, editors, reviewers, content producers, um, social media managers, all that good stuff. All the things, everything there is. So if you want to apply, go to the website, uh, go to the application page, which can be found on the About uh, tab at the end. Uh, at the top of the page, or at the story um, that was written about it yesterday, um, yeah, we we look forward to reading tens of forties more. What are you? Are you? Are you chanting some like fucking spell on us? No, I was just saying, join us and whispering it. <laughs> join <laughs> some subliminal messaging. Join us. So you can find us all on Twitter. You can find me at Osborne underscore two thousand nine. You could find Lou at. Lou Cantaldi. And you can find Miles at Furious Milk. Ah, good day, guys. Good day. Monk? Monk. 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 Monk.